Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Sermon and Song with Blue in the Face. I'm Chris Catalano and I'm going to talk to you about all things love of God until I'm blue in the face. Today's topic, where am I chasing heaven? In the first part of our Chasing Heaven series, we spoke about what are you chasing, staying on the right road to God, and the choices we sometimes make to chase the things of earth instead of heaven that only lead us feeling more empty. Next, we spend some time talking about who we should chase in the person of Jesus. We chase Jesus because he first chased us in love. Then last time, we spoke about when we chase heaven. When we serve the poor, bless his creation, become present to those who are in need, lift up one another in prayer, nurture our prayer lives, these are among the many times we choose to chase heaven with clear and unabashed conviction. But we said that the list is truly inexhaustible because God is inexhaustible. So let's move on today. Today let's consider where we chase heaven. Now I've been teaching music in the public schools for nearly a quarter of a century. If I had a dollar for every time I said to a student, why did you do that? I could have retired a long time ago. Invariably, the answer I almost always get is, I don't know. At this point in my career, I've come to believe that my kids are really telling me the truth. They really don't know. You think that's so unique? Think of the words of St. Paul in sacred scripture. For I do not do the good I want, but I do the evil I do not want. Sounds like St. Paul sometimes didn't understand it any better than us. The attractive lure of sin is a staple in the human condition. When we were kids, we spent our summers camping across the country. I always remember that a few days before each trip, my dad would go to the local AAA Auto Club, and they would go over the maps for the entire trip they charted out for him on what they called a trip tick. They would plan the whole route for him, and my mom would help him navigate so we wouldn't get lost. All these years later, I think the lesson that taught me was the importance of planning. It seems that planning is always a critical part of our life's successes. You want to get somewhere important? You better make planning part of the process. Reminds me of that old adage, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I believe one of our biggest obstacles to finding the places where we chase heaven is actually within us. Sometimes, like Paul, we don't even fully know why we choose the sin we choose. We become just like our kids where they honestly say, I don't know why I did that. But maybe sometimes it's all about creating the right environment so we can map out our journey to get where we want in Christ. To do that, it would seem that the first step to find God and the things of heaven is to set our eyes and hearts with the right disposition. That's critical in mapping out our pathway to Christ. And if we are indeed bathed in divinity all around us as we spoke about last time, then we have to make sure our eyes are prepared to see it or we'll simply miss the entire thing. So how do we do this? It all begins with creating the fertile ground within us. We simply can't see heaven outside ourselves if we can't nurture it within us first. Said another way, you need the right environment to grow oranges in the winter or they simply won't grow. It all becomes about creating a fertile environment for the Spirit of God to grow in. And if that's our goal, then we first have to take steps in that direction. As my philosophy professor Ed Higgins used to say, if you want to go bowling, then your first step must be in the direction of the bowling alley. So let's talk about three ways to create the fertile ground for God's Holy Spirit to grow within us so we can in turn create the right disposition to want to chase heaven 
and the right disposition to see it everywhere. First, the most obvious way to create holy fertile ground within us is through our prayer life. Our daily quiet time with God helps us to stay connected to the life stream of divinity ever flowing in and through us. There's simply no substitute for this. Prayer is conversation with God. If you have a close friend and you never make the time to talk with them, it'll certainly have a big impact on growing the relationship. Same is true with God. When we nurture and chase heaven within ourselves, we create the right environment for God to thrive inside us. Second way to create fertile ground within, allowing ourselves to be opened. Our daily prayer will allow us to be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit within us. Once our ears are unstopped, we begin to hear things we never expected we would. Sounds a lot like one of my favorite stories in the Gospel of Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. Once we are opened and have that Ephatha experience, we never hear the same way again. We never speak his praises the same way. We never see the same way. We never forgive the same way. We never love the same way. In short, we never live the same way. And that leads us to our last way to create fertile ground within us. Doing good with every opportunity we get, which of course has an inexhaustible number of possibilities. Doing good fills us with the grace that perpetuates the ongoing cycle of further prayer and being opened. All this becomes a wonderful vicious cycle of holiness that helps us to water and maintain the fertile ground where the kingdom of God lives and grows within us. So where we chase heaven is not so much about a place as much as it is about a disposition within. Where results from an outgrowth of the daily decision we make to allow our hearts to be a manger for Jesus to be born in again and again. Once we create that environment within us, we want to bring that to the world around us. Once we change our hearts to fertile spiritual ground, the where we want to chase heaven becomes everywhere and the only choice we ever really want to make. And it all begins with the right planning and a spiritual roadmap to lead us to where we chase heaven, both in and around us. I, saw, I know for sure but I was chasing heaven This is the title song of my latest CD called Ephatha, Be Opened. It was actually inspired by a real-life miracle of a friend of mine who heard sound in her right ear for the first time in her mid-50s after being told years earlier that she would never be able to. May this song open you to the thunderous voice of Christ within you and lead you to hear and see the things of heaven in new and dynamic ways. Come, let me hear the sound.
sound of your voice At the time Whisper your thunder Shout from on high The word of your power In my ear Open my ear Come, let me hear the sound.